It's bright and early this morning, and we have a pitch from one of our students who's selling energy, energy drinks. So if any of you are feeling a little tired today, uh, go ahead, they're $10 a pop. Um, for those of you watching the video after the fact, we can even ship energy drinks live to you after the lecture. So let me know and we'll give you one of them. Um, so going back off yesterday, we had our friend the ape who wanted to know which of his descendants lived to a given age. And we had a few different techniques for doing this, a few different data structures we used. We started with just looking at a normal, um, a normal array, both sorted and unsorted, asking how long did it take. And in the case of an unsorted array, we had to look through every element. If we had a sorted array, we could do it in log n time using binary search. We asked about what it means to sort different things and talked a little about polymorphism. In, particu in particular, the use of function pointers to allow us to reuse a sorting function no matter what type of data we were dealing with. We then examined a new type of data structure that was specifically built for solving this kind of problem, binary search trees. Now, just to go over what we did yesterday, for binary search trees, the property that was necessary was that the right subtree always had to be greater than or equal to any given node, which had to be greater than everything in the left subtree. So pulling it up again, this was our binary search tree that we represented with the different ages of all the apes. And if you look on the left-hand side, everything is smaller than the root, this number 20, and everything on the right-hand side is larger. And if you do the same for any given node, it still works out. So if we look at the 33 over there on the, on the left-hand side, um, everything to the left of 33, oh, yeah, 33 on the left-hand side, everything to the left of 33 was larger than 33, and everything to the right was smaller than 33. How did we do a traversal? Well, we took a, a little bit of a trip with, I think it was Bruce who guided us through the uh, runtime of uh, searching on a binary search tree, or might have been Max, I forget who it was. Um, but if we wanted to find a given number, we would follow the links. For example, to find the largest, we would consistently go to the left over and over until we could go left no more, and then we found the largest item. So what was the runtime of this? It ended up being the height of the tree. Um, and this was going to be our, both to figure out the average case, we would have to figure out on average how far down the tree a given item is. And for our worst case, we had to figure out what is the longest a tree could possibly be. What was the longest, the deepest a tree could possibly be yesterday? We talked about this. Michael. N element is just something that's basic. And what do we call that? It wasn't a tree, it was a, it was a stick. So when all of the elements are in a row, we had our stick. So n items gives us a maximum height of n, so this would be uh, O of n time to find an item in the worst case. We then, at the very, very end, asked the question of could we get worst case O of n log n search? And I told you at the end that yes, it is possible, but unfortunately, we're going to need to, if we want to do this, we have to find a way to ensure that our tree is always balanced. That is, that uh, it is as complete as possible, that the height is minimized no matter what items we add or delete as we go along. Because remember, our tree is meant to be dynamic. It's meant to function as uh, new elements get added and as some elements are taken away. And if we're doing this, we uh, naively, we might end up with a binary tree that's unbalanced that looks more like a stick. So it needs some fancier data structure in more advanced classes to balance it out. But I would encourage you to go and look it up because it's really interesting. So with that, that's our recap of the last lecture where we've started to go into a little more complex material. But I want to leave you at this point with a couple of minutes to kind of, one second our fun, to kind of solidify um, what you've learned so far. Yes. So what I want everyone to do now is we've just had the two demos of uh, how to search through the tree. Remember this one, if we were looking for the number 27, we went from 20 to the 33, because 27 is larger than 20, but it's smaller than 33. Um, sorry, let's say we were looking for 22. 22 is larger than 20, it's smaller than 33, it's smaller than 27, so we get to 22 and that tells us what links to take. So I want all of you to get some, out some pen and paper and write the pseudocode for a function that would traverse this tree. And now it can be in English, just a description of what to do, but you're gonna probably have either a loop or some form of recursion 
and you should schedule out if you're given a route and a value that you want to find, an algorithm, a basic set of steps that you can take that'll get you from the route to the node you're looking for. So you're gonna have a good about five minutes to do this. Okay, that's probably enough time. So we're gonna go ahead and Violet's gonna help us along try and write one version of the code. Um, so here on the right hand side, we have our node, it's left hand side for you guys, my right, um, the node T type, and we're given the root, and we can call the root whatever we like, and we've got a key that we're looking for that we're trying to match against. So Violet, what, how should we start off our algorithm? Um, like, I'm assuming like the left tree is only smaller than the parent node. Yep. The tree is the bigger one. Um, so like the T1, when you the value is larger than the target key. Wait a minute. What happens if the root key is the one we were looking for? Okay, so check if it's like the base case. Check if um, the left and right are both null. Okay. Uh, should we check if they're null or should we check what the root act, what data the root holds? Oh, right, okay, yeah. So tell me what to write. Um, if like the roots of the two, the value is equal to the key. And if it is? Um, return the root. Okay, that's a good start. Now what? Um, but if the value is like larger than the key, uh, you mean if root data is larger than um, the key? Um, call search tree T one. So is this search tree? Is that what you're telling me? Oh, okay. I call the algorithm search tree. Okay, let's call it just search to save on handwriting, and it's going to take in the root and the key. Um, and then do you like the root point to the left? Um, but like you should check that the left is like null. Okay, so that was a good point, but you said it's slightly too late for me to write it in, so I'm going to do that quickly now. if root left, and so if not root left, so if the left doesn't exist, what do I do? Um, return it not. Yeah, return not found. And otherwise you set it before, so I'll just write it in. And we're gonna use the same key. Now, given that our search function is, we're expecting it to return something, what word am I missing on this line, on that last line there? Yeah, I should have a return. Now let's uh, give ourselves a little bit more room. Okay, what's my other case? So I'll write that quickly, excuse the handwriting. Can we have a round of applause for Violet who did a pretty good job there on, the, on our function? Okay, let me exit from that and go to our real code. So we have a few ways of doing it. This is where we've, instead of using a variable for key, we've explicitly substituted in the number 42. Um, this is the iterative version. What we just saw with Violet was the recursive version. Uh, this is the iterative version written in, I think this is accurate C code. And you can see what we've done instead of having the recursive calls to left and right, all we're doing is changing a pointer P which is going to represent our current pointer. So our pointer starts off pointing to the root and we update it every iteration to point either to the thing on the left or the thing of the right of the current uh, node that we're looking at depending on whether we're bigger or smaller than the key. Um, and there is our recursive version which we uh, just worked out. Um, this again has excluded the null pointer checks which Violet was very generous to include and which is actually an important component of the function. You need to have a not found. However, you can see that at its, at its slimmest, if we're ignoring error checking and assuming that the element's in there, the code for actually traversing a, um, a binary search tree is pretty simple. Um, and so you should hopefully be able to write this kind of one in an assessment. 
Okay, so that was our easiest case was a traversal. However, now things get a little bit more difficult and we're talking about insertion and then deletion. And deletion is the hardest one, so hard that in other versions of the course it hasn't even been taught. We could only add things to our binary search tree. So how does insertion work? This is the pseudocode for it that I have uh, pre-written pre for you. So again, I'm leaving out some of the error checking just to uh, make things a little easier to fit on our slides. So to insert something, let's say we have our item X that we want to insert and we have the root. So the first thing to do is to check if X is bigger than, less than, or equal to the current item that we're examining. So starting at the root, is X bigger than the root or is it smaller than the root? If it is bigger or equal than the root, then we should go to the left of the root and we can call recursive insert again. Um, otherwise, uh, if, root dot, if root's left child doesn't exist, there's nothing to go down. And if there's nothing to go down, that means that we are the next element in order to be put there. And so assign root's left pointer to be x. Now, one thing to note here is that though I've called it root, uh, in a recursive function, what is the root is going to change. So at the start, the root will be the root of the whole tree. But then if you've taken, say, a, a left step, or this is confusing with uh, left and right uh, being reflected for you guys, but let's say uh, you take this step from the root. You have a new node here, and when you make the recursive call, this will become the new root. It's the root of the subtree that you're currently looking at that we're talking about in this function. Um, and obviously, because our trees are going to be uh, symmetrical in the way they work, so if x was smaller than the current root of the subtree, then we check if the right pointer already points to something. If it does point to something, then we have to go down that subtree and check. Otherwise, um, set the right to be uh, the new, uh, you can set the right to be the new element. So here's our example with 28. 28 is bigger than 20, but it is less than 33, but it is bigger than 27, but 27 has no right pointer, and so we can just insert it right there, and we're done. Um, so insertion as well, not that bad, yes? No, no question, okay. Uh, what about deletion? Deletion is the really tricky one. Um, and I think we can, we can say that it's outside of scope for actually being able to replicate deletion on the exam. It's more for you to see how it works. Um, and I've included also in the, it's not in the book, but I have a version of the code that we're gonna be using for the rest of the class that has a deletion method in there as well for you to use and play around with. Um, so deletion is a little tricky because we have three different cases. Um, and where the case that we're going to ignore in this instance is if the root is the one we're trying to delete because that gets a little too complicated. That code is in the, in the sample code I've provided, but not in the pseudo code. So the first thing we have to do is find uh, the parent of x. So let's say we want to delete a given node in the tree um, which node do we want to delete? So let's say we want to delete the number 22. What is the parent of 22? Just yell it out. 27. 27. So we're going to need some function that goes through the um, through our binary search tree and finds 27. Where's our microphone going? Violet still got it. So we need a function to find the parent of a given node. Let's say we're looking for the parent of 22. Just describe to me how we might do this simply, and hold up the microphone. So. When we disrupt our node, we keep we keep the we keep his children, so we can go back to find his parent. Yeah, so we could have it again, like we discussed yesterday. We could change the structure of our nodes so that we have the parent in there. Or what's the other way? Let's say we're in the middle of traversal. Is there a way that I can modify my traversal function such that I always know what a node's parent is? It was in yesterday, I remember. Yeah, so say I'm about to go down the left or the right. And what, what piece of information can I save in a variable such that even when I go down the left or the right, I still know what the parent was? Um, the pointer to? to the parent? Yeah, you can just keep a pointer of the parent hanging around 
in your, in your recursive call such that you always know uh, what the parent of the current node was. So we know how to implement our, um, our find parent function. There are some fairly simple changes we can make to our traversal function or to our actual node structure to make this work. We save a variable on left that says is x to the left of the parent or if it's to the right of its parent. So in our case over here, um, 20, oh, we're gonna delete 21, not 22. 22 is the parent that I've marked with P. So 21 is to which direction of 22? It is to the, the right of, wait, to the left, to, to the right of my way, to the left of you guys. Oh, this is terrible with left and right. Yeah, so it's to the left of, um, of 22, which means that is left is going, on left is going to be true. This is just to let us know where we are in the tree and so where we're gonna be making the changes. So now we check, is the node that we're deleting, does it have any children of its own? If it doesn't have any children of its own, what can we do? It says up there. Yeah, we can just delete it. It doesn't have any children of its own. It's, at the, it's hanging off something else. We can just change the pointer from the thing it was hanging off to make it so that it now points to null. So in our case, in our example here, we just take away that pointer. So you'll see, otherwise, if it's on the left, make the left pointer be null. If it was on the right, um, then make the right pointer null. So that's our simple case. We just delete the pointer. Now we have two other cases. Jaslyn, is there a question or just focusing hard? Focusing hard, okay. Um, there's our, all I'm doing here is I'm bu slowly building up our function. So there's our first case where x neither has something on the left nor on the right. Now let's check if x has something on the right. We already know that it doesn't have, that it's not the case that it's got no children, maybe it's got one child on the right. So if it's got one child on the right and it was on the left of its parent, set the parent's left to be x's left. Yeah, so I'll say, I'll say this again. X has, has a child on the left. How do we know it has a child on the left? We know it's not the case that it has no children, and then our else if tells us that there is a null pointer on the right. Combining these two conditions means x must have a child on its left, which means that if x was on the left of its parent, then we should set its parent's left to be x's left, because this allows us to cut x out of the loop. So here we have our, now we're deleting the no 22. This will make it much more concrete. We know that, uh, its par that x does have a child, so it's not the case that both the pointers are null. We also see that, it's that x's right pointer is null. 22 doesn't have a right child. It does have a left child, so if we were to delete 22, the right thing to do would be to move 21 and connect it to 27. And so what we're doing is we're setting 27's left pointer to be what X's left pointer used to be. Now this logic applies even if you start reversing things. So let's say that 21 was on the right of 22, then I would set 27's left pointer to be what was on the right of X. That's if uh, 21 was over here. So that would be the right pointer from X, but it should still be co connected to the left pointer of P. We have the opposite case, which is just, this was the, the case we had over here, was if X only has a left child, we do exactly the same thing. If X only has a right child, we just flip where we're connecting it. So that's our case number two. So you could say this is case one, that's case two A, that's case 2b. And what's our last remaining case? Kieran, do you wanna say into the microphone, what's our last case? So we know it's not just one on the left, we know it's not just one on the right, and we know it has at least one child. So we know there are more than zero children. We know that the right is not null, and we know that the left is not null, so what must, what's our third case? So there's something there, there's something there, so how many children do we have? Yes, two children. So that's our third case, is you just have both children present. So we've gone through the case where there are, we know they're not zero, 
we know that there's something present on the left and we know that there's something present on the right, therefore we must have two children. So that's our third case. Seems silly. But, uh, I'm sorry, but I mean the third case is also included in one in either of, the, of those, those cases, so we don't need to include it in our code, right? We do need to include it, because this is checking that, this is saying there is one null pointer. That one is saying there is one null pointer, and the first case was there are two null pointers. So we know there are not two null pointers. We know there's not a null pointer on the left, we know there's not a null pointer on the right. And so the last case that we haven't covered yet is where there are zero null pointers. This is a two null pointer, one null pointer, one null pointer, and we need a case for zero null pointers. And so the other way of saying zero null pointers is two children. Make sense now? Okay, I can draw it out quickly. We'll, we'll spend a few more seconds because we're ahead in the course. Um, uh, give me a second just to bring the iPad up. There we go. Okay, our first case, I will use a big X to refer to nulls. So this is the node. Our first case was there are two null pointers, right? There, that was our first case, up the top there, if there are two null pointers. Our second case was if there is a null pointer there, right? If there's a null pointer there, and we know there aren't two, that means there must be a valid pointer here. Our other case was the other way around. Our case 2b was there is a null pointer here, and we know there is at most one null pointer at this point, so that means there must be a valid link there. Now we are in our third instance where we know that neither of those null pointers exists. If neither of those null pointers exist, both of these must be valid pointers, which means there are two children. If that doesn't make sense, you'll have to go back and uh, watch the, the lecture recording after. So we're in our last case, and our last case is as follows. We have a new function that we need, which is find the minimum value on a subtree. So you wanna find the smallest value that comes after x. So let's say x is 15 and we have the numbers in our tree 17, 19, and 16. The minimum value of the numbers that come after x is 16, because 16 is bigger than 15, but it's smaller than all the other numbers in x's uh, right. Then what we do is we move its successor up to where x used to be, and then we delete, uh, we can call our delete function again and delete that successor node that is now on the bottom. Why, does this, why is this gonna work? It's because by doing these swaps, we're eventually gonna get to a point where a successor has no children, and when we have no children, we know the delete operation is really easy. So let's look at that. Let's say we're trying to delete 33. 33 is in the case, Min? Is that a hand up or just a stretch hand? Um, so let's try and delete 33. 33 has two children which is going to make life a little more difficult for us. So we have our parent, which is 20 up there, and now what we have to do is find the successor to 33. So what is the next biggest number after 33? Oh, thank you, Quinn. Um, so it's 34, and the way we do that is by uh, writing our find successor function, which we know how to do. We just use our tree traversal uh, to find the minimum element on that uh, subtree. Then we swap it, and now let's try and delete 33. And now we know how to delete an element which only has one child, because we, we just went through that. So what we do to delete uh, one, an element with one child is we find its parent, and then we just rearrange the pointers to put the child where uh, 33 used to be. So we're going to remove 33, and now 34 and 40 will be connected. So let's look at that process one more time again. We start off and we're trying to delete 33. The way we delete 33 is first by finding its successor, that's the number 34, although it could have been anywhere in the subtree. We swap 34 and 33, and you can just swap the data values, you don't actually have to rearrange all the pointers, because swapping the data is kind of equivalent. Then we call delete on 33, and 33 is our instance where it just has one child and we know how to delete a node with just one child. 
All we do is reconnect things by finding the parent of the thing we're about to delete and connecting it to the child. Is that a question? No, okay. So after that uh, kind of strenuous run through the logic of it, we're gonna take a look at the code. And our code is gonna have a few of the features that we've been discussing. So first up, oh, my mouse has disappeared. That's gonna make this interesting. There we go. Um, so first up, we have a header file. And in our header file, treeops.h, I'm going to define my node t type. And there's our node type, as we've seen before, okay. Should be good already. And remember, if we wanted to keep track of the parent, one thing that we could potentially do is we could have an additional node in here, but then we would need to modify all our functions to keep track of the parent when we insert something or delete something and update that link appropriately. It might make some of our code more complicated and it might make some of our code more simple, um, and so that's something to toss up. There is another downside to including the parent in every node, and what's that? Oscar? Downside to including, sorry, what? Oh, the, it takes more space. Yeah, it takes more space, um, and so our, um, it gives me a look of like, it hardly takes any more space, it's just one point is worth. He's right in that in most cases it's not going to be a major burden to take up that little bit more space, but when you're talking about building large computer systems, if you're at the scale of a Google or Facebook, then even saving that one node's worth might end up being worthwhile if you've got thousands and thousands and thousands of nodes in your tree, which actually is something that happens a reasonable amount. So now we have a new struct for our tree type. And our tree type is gonna contain two things, and this is going to allow us to have a polymorphic tree. Um, we are going to have a root node, which will always contain the root of the whole tree, and our comparison function. Um, do you want, Gwen, do you want to pass back the microphone one? Oliver? Remind me, why do we want to have a comparison function in the first place? Uh, it means that uh, depending, given like any data type, you can define uh, like an order between them, which is very useful. Yeah, so for our tree in particular, when we, ha we have all these operations which compare nodes in the tree, um, but we don't wanna have to write in our tree code what those types are gonna be ahead of time. So we're going to use polymorphism, which was this idea of writing our code that is going to work with multiple different types, and the way we've done this is through a function pointer. Remember, the key to making a function pointer work was write the prototype, write, write the prototype as normal, so this is an, uh, returns an integer, takes in two pointers, and then we add a pointer to the name of the variable and we put parentheses around it. Now we have a function pointer. On top of this, we need function prototypes for all our tree functions. We're gonna have make empty tree, is empty tree, so we know that there's actually something there. Search tree to find a given key. Insert in order, which we just discussed. Traverse tree, which is just to go through all the different nodes one by one. Free tree, and recursive delete. Um, and this is going to be to delete a node. And free tree, remember, why, why do we need free tree, Oliver? Uh, free tree is so once we're done with the tree, we can... Yeah, we don't wanna have any memory leaks and because we're gonna be using malloc as we're dynamically adding and taking away nodes, we need to have some function that is going to give that memory back to the operating system when we're done. Okay, so let's look at, next we'll look at tree ops. And this is what we've been talking about. So let's start with some functions that we've already talked about. Uh, here is recursive search tree. We have a slightly more complicated version than what Violet was giving us before, because now along with the root and the key, we've also added a comparison function. And as Oliver said, we need the comparison function so that we can actually compare elements of different nodes in our tree. So the way this works is we're gonna have a flag variable, a variable that is just gonna keep track of whether our function has succeeded or not. First thing to do, check if the root exists. If the root doesn't exist, then we know the element we're looking for obviously isn't in the tree. If um, the comparison is less than zero, so our comparison function is gonna give less than zero if, the, uh, if key is smaller than root data, then search the left of the tree. Otherwise, search the right of the tree. If, we, uh, if 
the comparison function is neither less than zero nor greater than zero, what must it be? Oliver, you've got the microphone. Must be zero, and if, it's, if the comparison function returns zero, that means our elements are equal. So we have found the item we were looking for. So now we can close that one off. That's our recursive search tree. Um, and our search tree function here is just making a call into recursive search tree and checking that the tree is not null. So there's nothing, nothing much exciting there. Our recursive insert is the one we were just looking at uh, before. So first check, check that the tree actually exists. Check whether it needs to be put on the left or the right. And otherwise uh, return the root. There's a typo. Uh, I think so. Let's say, let's check, yeah, RGHT. To make them the same number of characters. Um, this code is courtesy of Alistair. Um, so notice what we're doing if root is null. I skipped over this a second ago. When root is null, what I'm not doing is, um, what I'm not doing is just returning failure. Why am I returning a new here? Why is my insert function going to actually return something even when the root is null? Yeah, I needed, I needed to insert it, and so if I'm inserting something, the correct thing to do when your root is null is not to just give up, it's to put the item that you actually want to insert at that location. Um, and so that's why we have return new here. And, oh, um, and otherwise, return root. Okay, now let's look at uh, our insert in order. The same kind of thing, return a pointer to an altered tree that now includes the object value in its correct location. So to do this, we're going to need to actually make the new node correctly. We're going to do just an assertion to make sure that our tree is not null and our new node that our malloc just succeeded. We're going to put the value into the node. Remember, when we create a new struct, we need to initialize it with things correctly. We're going to assign the pointers correctly uh, we're going to set them initially to null pointers and then update them as we go along. So when we add new things into the tree, we're going to eventually update their left and their right pointers. But for the beginning, when nothing has been allocated to them, we can assume it's going to be a leaf and set them to null. And then we do our recursive insert over here. So insert in order is actually calling our recursive insert function to fix up the tree. Our traverse is even simpler than all the others so far. Our, our traverse just checks um, if the root, if, the, if we're actually looking at a valid root. If we are, because we want to visit all the nodes, so visit all the nodes on the left, do whatever you want to do, whatever the action is on the current node that we're looking at, and then look at everything on the right. Now there are three different ways that we could do traversal. Oliver, do you want to pass it behind you? Maybe to Kylie. So what are the three different ways that we could do, uh, what are the few, are there three? Them? What are the different ways that we could do um, traversal? Yeah, it's on. So I could look at everything on the left first, then look at the current thing, then look at everything on the right. What else could I do? So I could do it, let's see if this works, I could do all the bigger things first, um, then the current thing, and then all the smaller things. Other ways? Could do left, then right, then data, and there's one more order. Then I could do right, then left, then action. I think, have I missed one? Or I could do action, then right, then left, and then action, and then left, then right. And now I think we've covered all of them. Um, so if you want to print out the leaves of the, if you want to print out the tree in a given order, by modifying the order in which these happen, you can get a different printout of all your different uh, 
nodes or conduct the action in a different order. And this is going to be dependent on what you're actually trying to do. For, so for example, if your action is just print the value at the current node and you want to print the tree in order from smallest to largest, then you would do uh, left, then the one you're looking at because we know that the one you're currently looking at is bigger than all the things on the left, and then you do all the ones on the right. And so I would encourage you to play around with that. And here's just our traverse tree function that calls the recursive one. Our recursive free is much the same, except there's only, there are only two valid orders for this one. So we recurse, we could, we first delete everything on the left, we then delete everything on the right, and then we can free the one we're currently looking at. Why would it be a mistake to, Kylie, you can answer this one to start this way. Because um, when you free the root, then you don't have the custom order. Yeah, so that would leave us unable to do the other two actions, and so that binds us to doing things only one particular way. And then our delete function, which I'm not going to go into detail because it was a little more complicated, um, but we have our variety of different cases. So first we have, um, yeah, so we have our case one, which is are the two pointers null? So in which case you can free the root and return null. In case 2a, we only have a child on the right. In case 2b, we only have a child on the left. And in case three, the node has two children, and then we need to call recursive delete. So it's what we saw before, but we're not gonna walk through it in detail. Okay, so there's our uh, treeops dash with dash deletion dot c. There's also a version in the course called treeops dot c that just doesn't have the deletion one. Feel free to use either, but if you do want to dynamically remove things from the tree, you'll need this uh, more advanced version. Okay, and in our final few minutes of class, we get to actually using this thing that we've spent so long building up. So all this function does is we're now gonna use a binary search tree to count words in a given text file and then print a sorted list of words and their frequencies. We've already done this in the class a few times before where we've taken in some text and counted up the frequencies. But the idea here is to use a binary search tree to optimize this, to make it faster because we're going to be searching for a given word over and over and over again. Let's say the word has appeared uh, twice already. We don't want to have to, we want to have an efficient way to find this word in our tree because we know it's already there because we've seen it twice and to update the data associated with that key. So we're going to have our data t be a struct itself. So right up until now, we've been using a data t that's been like an int or a, or a string. But in fact, our data t can be a structure itself. So in this case, our data t is going to be, have both a string inside it and how many times we've seen this string so far. So this is the nested kind of structs that are nested types that we were talking about. Because a node t has data in it and every data t has a string in it and a frequency in it. We then need to define our comparison function, which will take in two void pointers, which we're then going to convert to data t, because we're going to be comparing the data at every node and the data is this st struct thing. And then we're just going to do a string comparison on the word element of the data t of the first one and the word element of the data t of the second one. Okay, we're gonna skip the print and free one because you can uh, guess what that one does without too much difficulty. Okay, first thing we do, let's see how to use our uh, tree ops. First thing we do is we make an empty tree and the comparison function that we're gonna be using throughout is this compare string parts function which we just defined above. One of the nice things about treeops.h is the way it works is you don't have to keep passing along this comparison function, you just define this comparison function when you make the tree in the first place. When we do make empty tree, make empty tree takes a function pointer as an argument and so if for everything that you do with that tree, you're gonna use that function pointer automatically. Um, tree eg dot c, here we are. We have our get word as before and for every word we make space for it. Um, but what we're going to do when we create the word is we're going to as well set its frequency to one. So we're going to create a new, um, how do we set the type of new? We're gonna set the type of new to our data t structure and our data t structure has both the word and the frequency in it. 
we're going to set the value of the word part of it to point to where we malloced some space for this word that we just read in. We're going to set its frequency to one, and then we're going to search the tree to see if the word is not already in it. If the word is not already in it, what do we have to do? Kylie, you've still got the microphone. Do you want to pass it to Lem? If the word is not in the tree, what do we do with our new word? It's not in the tree, and we want the tree to have all the words in it. What do we do? We add it. Not so hard. OK, I know we've gone a minute over, but we'll finish up in just a minute. So if it's not already in the tree, uh, make a place for it in the tree and insert it in order. If it is already in the tree, go uh, with now our uh, search tree function has successfully returned a pointer to where it is in the tree and update its frequency. However, because we malloced a temporary node for it, we do have to free the temporary one as well. And when we're done, when we've finished this process for all the words that we can possibly get, traverse the tree and print them in order. So the last thing we'll do for today is run it. Um, I think, there we go. And I'll talk more about make files a bit later. And this was called tree G, I think. Let me check the make file quickly. Tree, oh, it's just called tree. GCC tree, okay. Why isn't it doing anything? I need to give it some words, right? So let's feed in some words. Um, Oh, I stopped that up. Okay, there we go. And we can see it's now printed them in lexicographic order. I, R, class, fun, having, high, hope, on, silly, strike, there, we, you. Oh, and it actually did separate out the, the on strike for us. Um, I guess the scanf had, a, had a, a marker in it for that. And you can see that it's counted. I wrote the word on three times. I wrote the word strike three times. I wrote the word we two times. And with that, you are now all well equipped to use binary search trees. I will see you tomorrow for a new topic. Catch you all later.